And let's think about some examples of inertia. One would be a large ship, a freight ship out on the ocean. A large boat, a large ship. Let's say this is a container ship, so here's some cargo piled up. A very large ship. It's moving along. We'll put an arrow, put V there next to it for velocity just to indicate that it's moving. And the thing the thing to take note here is that it has a large mass. Okay, a large mass. So because of that it has lots of inertia. And you need to relate those two things in your mind. Large mass large masses always have lots of inertia. So it's difficult to get a ship moving takes a lot of force. The tugboats can push and push and push to get it into the right place or the engines run for a while. It doesn't just jump off the starting line like a sprinter. It's difficult to get it moving and it's difficult to stop it from moving. And I'll just take a note of that here. Difficult to get it moving it takes a lot of effort, a lot of energy, and difficult to stop. Another the another example that's that's like that is a freight train. The freight trains obviously have a very large mass, so much larger than cars and trucks. It's freight trains not only are the, are the cars huge, but there can be dozens of them or even a hundred or so in a in a typical train. So they tend to be very big, very heavy and lots of inertia as a result. So the same concepts that I've written here apply to a freight train. Now just to give you more of a sense of this, I'm going to show you a couple of videos of a freight train hitting a truck. We typically, and this is a large truck, like a semi-truck, a tractor trailer, 18-wheeler, whatever you want to call it, call it something that we typically think of as a large thing. I typically, when, when I'm driving down the road, I think of the 18-wheeler as a large truck, something that's that's massive, has a lot of inertia. But that's just compared to me. The truck is large compared to me or my little car. Compared to a train, the truck is really pretty small and insignificant. A freight train is huge. And they're, they're massive and they're incredibly hard to stop. You might have heard the expression, it's hard to stop a train. That's because they're so big. That's why if you're on the railroad tracks, you have to get out of the way. There's so much inertia that, that even if the conductor of the train sees you, or the engineer, the guy driving, sees you and hits the brakes, that train can't stop quickly. It might take a mile to bring that train to a stop just because it has so much so much inertia. And I'll show you some videos here. There's two little clips of a train hitting a truck. And the thing to take note of is that the train doesn't even slow down noticeably as a result of hitting the truck. It, it certainly does slow down some but the inertia of the train is so much, so large compared to the size of the truck that the, the change in the motion of the train is imperceptible. It just plows right through the truck. So watch those videos and keep that in mind. That because of the large mass of the train, the large inertia of the train, it's difficult for, for it to stop.